I'm going to be talking to you about Adobe Dimension. I'll go through the interface and tell you what it is. Do, are you kind of familiar with what the product is, first of all? Yeah? It's, it's a tool for taking 3D models and compositing them into a 2D space. Right? So it's quite cutting edge stuff. It's quite a new product for Adobe. Um, and I'm going to, as I say, just show you through the, uh, the workflow. It's pretty simple. If you use Photoshop, you'll very, very quickly be comfortable and familiar with it. Um, and I'm going to show you some of the ways it can be used. And along the way, I'm going to talk a bit about compositing in general, um, which is I do a lot of that. In fact, let me start off. I'll tell you a little bit about what I do. I'm um, principally a fashion, hair, and beauty photographer. I do an awful lot for the hair industry, so shoots for people like Weller and Schwarzkopf and L'Oreal and, and that kind of thing. Lots of advertising work. Um, and I've been uh, shooting for, what, over 35 years? Uh, been digital since 2001. Um, so I do an awful lot of this kind of work where I'm compositing 2D images. So. This is studio image, should just shot against a gray background, create a mask. I use all sorts of masking techniques. Anyone that wants to know about masking, come and grab me afterwards. Uh, this is a channel mask. This with the slopey horizon, this was shot, I was just outside a pub in Wales, hence the slopey horizon, just with my little compact camera. And so I took that and then we stuck it behind the subject uh, just to create. This was from a series of about 30 or 40 images that were all composited together. So um, that's quite a simple, straightforward way of doing it. Uh, things get a little bit more complex. This one here is for a different series. So the composite here is that's one shot, that's another shot. The arch of the castle is another shot. This area here was all created in Photoshop using the content aware fill tool because it didn't actually exist. Same with the shadow. The bats were, uh, I downloaded two bats from um, one of the stock libraries and then used the puppet warp tool to copy them and bend the wings into different positions and move them around. Uh, the castle in the background is three or four other elements. And then finally, you see that moon up there? That was my first ever 3D model. So I, I found a tutorial. Uh, I think it was in the back pages of Advanced Photoshop or something like that, how to create you know, sci-fi um, planets and moons and things like that. So I just worked my way through it, and that was it. So that kind of got me hooked into 3D images and sticking them into a 2D space. And this is what Adobe Dimension is all about. It's, as I say, it's a brand new product. And it's designed, I guess it was originally thought of as a product for designers, for design agencies, for illustrators, for people that wanted to create something that they could either use as a final advertising piece or as a mock-up to show the clients of how their products will look in a real environment. So what I'm going to do is bear with me while I just jump out of uh, my slideshow and we'll jump into Adobe Dimension. So um, on launch, you are presented with this. And I'll talk you through the different panels. We've got a toolbar running up the side there. This one here, this is where all of our 3D models sit and various other things as well. I'll show you those as we go. We've got a stage area here, which is where everything's going to happen. And then over on this side, that top corner there, imagine that's like the layers panel in Photoshop. So you'll see things appear in there in folders. And then all, you know, there'll be things inside the folders, which we'll talk through. And then this bottom area here, this is kind of a context sensitive thing. So as we click on different parts of the layers, 
these will change and do appropriate things for us. So let's get started and I'm going to get my glasses on and then just find something we can play with. So a lot of the ones in here are fairly basic. As I say, it's designed a lot for illustrators and for people that work in advertising and that kind of thing. There are, however, if you look down the bottom here, browse Adobe stock and give it a second. There are an awful lot more resources on here. Yeah, which you can search for. Some of them are free, some of them are paid for. But you can take those and bring them in. There are an awful lot of free 3D models out there in the web which you can also bring in. As long as they are the right format, um, Dimension works with a format called OBJ, dot OBJ. So you make sure that your 3D model is in that format. If it's not, there's software out there that can convert it from one format to another. So all is not lost. If it's something you can only find in another format, you can change it. Um, so let me just hide that and go back to dimension. So um, I'm going to take, as I say, one of these. And there are two ways of getting it onto the stage. You can drag and drop it, and you can see that square there will show you where it's going to fall. Or you can simply just double click it, and there it is. Now, you can see the immediate first problem is that it's way too big. Can you also see here, we've got, it's a kind of three arrows pointing at 90 degrees to each other. So it's kind of like this. Yeah. And those allow me to move it around. So I can move it around on the stage, backwards and forwards. This one's interesting. If I can lift it above the ground plane, and I can drop it below the ground plane. Can you see you get that blue outline just showing me that that part of it is below ground level? So let's pop it back there. And I'm, I'm on the, at the moment, I'm on the Move tool. You can see it's got the same shortcut key as Photoshop. It's just a V. So it's really simple to get used to. Um, now, it's, it's a bit big, isn't it? So if we move from the Move tool and go down one, we've got a Scale tool. And you can see that that shape now has changed to a triangle. If I grab the center of the triangle, I can Sorry, if I grab the center of the triangle, I can scale the object down yeah, to where I want it. Grabbing the corners of the triangle allow me to distort like that. So we can make it taller, shorter, whatever we want to do. Yeah. So we'll keep it there for now. Move down one. And we've got an orbit tool. So the orbit tool will allow me to rotate the object. You can see all the time this ground plane is staying still, and I'm moving the object on it. So it's literally like turning it around on a table. Um, again, because it's a virtual object, we can drop it below if we want to. So we're currently just moving the object on that flat table. But ignore the two in the middle there for a second. I'll come back to those in a minute. The four at the bottom there. They're about moving us in relation to the subject. So we've got a similar looking orbit tool. And just select it. But what I'm going to do with that is it's going to allow me to move our position. Yeah? So, oh, see, can you see in there? We've actually got something inside the box, inside the bag. This is, there's a few little Easter eggs in this panel here. You'll find that's quite a few where the lids come off things or there's things inside. So it's just stuff to play with. Um, and if you look over at our layers panel here, you can see that I've got bag and box. So if I select box and then go back to my move tool, I can actually lift the box out of the bag. 
And because, of course, it's a virtual object, I don't have to worry so much about lifting it off out of the top. I can take it out of the side. I can take it out of the front and back. Yeah. So again, that is now an independently uh, movable um, object. I'm just going to lose it for a minute because I don't really want it to be using that. Um, and we'll go back to the bag. Now, we've got this object. What we really want to do, though, is we've got it's a black kind of, I don't know what material that's supposed to be, but we want to stick a different material on it. So our tool here, if you can see that, this is our materials tab. And that gives us lots of options. We can make the bag out of glass. We can make it out of acrylic. We can make it out of walnut, granite, whatever we want to do. Obviously, a, an appropriate one for this would be glossy paper. So I'm just going to drop that there. And it immediately changes the character of it to make it a bit more realistic. What's really cool about this is if you've got the Creative Suite and you've got an app on there called Adobe Capture, you can go out and you can take a photograph of a material, anything. So if your client says, well, we've got this really deep green mottled piece of paper that we're going to make all of our bags out of, you can take a photograph of that, save it as a material, and bring it into the environment and attach that to the object. So you can change its character again. Um, <clears throat> Now, obviously, the point of this is to be able to add this into a background, a, a photograph. Over on our tab at the right there, they bundle in some backdrops. Once again, if you want to, you can go to Browse Adobe Stock. And there's thousands and thousands of backgrounds there. Or what I'm going to do is we're going to import an image as a background. So that's just an, Im uh, an image that's sitting on my hard drive. So I'm going to take this one here. This is a little job I did for a factory not so long ago. And <clears throat> let's just load it in. And I'm going to change the, well, I didn't quite go through all of these panels here. We've got that orbit one that you just saw so we can see inside the bag. The next one down is like the pan tool in Photoshop so we can move the object left and right. We've got a dolly tool, which is kind of like zooming in and out of the subject. And then the bottom one there allows me to change the ground plane so I can bring it down and pop it on that table. Now, you can see at the moment it's gone back to this strange blackish color, we've lost that white paper thing. It's not actually lost. What's happened is we haven't lit it. So we've got two ways of lighting it. On this tab here, we've got environment lights. Now, environment lights are the ambient light that is bouncing back onto the subject from within the room. And we've got all these presets here to allow you to do that. And we've also got uh, down here in this context sensitive area, we can change the intensity and the rotation and create our own preset. And we can save that if we want. But if you look down, see that box here that's unchecked? It says sunlight. Um, sunlight's probably not the best. It's just a light. It's sunlight because, for, you know, for a lot of uh, occasions, you'll be sticking something out into an environment outdoors. But it, it is just a light. So if I click on that, you can see immediately it's changed its character there. And if I open that disclosure triangle, I can change the intensity of it. I can change the softness of the shadows. Let's put some shadows on it. I bring uh, I'm going to rotate the light. You can see as we're moving the light round, it's pretty cool. And then, as I say, I can change the hardness of that light. I'll move it around a little bit more. Let's get a bit more 
detail in there. So we've got this, we can fiddle around with it, make it look a bit more realistic, spend a bit more time with it. One of the things that's really cool, which is a really nice little touch, is if we go back to our assets panels here, I've got this brand logo. Can you see? Just there. That's just a piece of flat artwork. So if your client has got a logo, they've got something and they want it on their product, once again, using Adobe Capture or just taking a shot of it or getting the Illustrator file sent over to you as a flat piece of artwork, you can import that. We just go to File, Import, and it's Place Graphic as Decal. Uh, but I'm going to actually use this one because it's easier. And I'm not going to do it like that. Excuse me. What that's done is it's put it in the wrong place. So just undo that. You grab it, drag it, drop it. And now what will happen is when I move that, when I move that, I've lost it. Sorry, it's just done something it shouldn't do. Let me just get rid of that again. Just do it again. What that's doing now is it's allowing me, can you see how that's moving around the subject? It's wrapping itself around that 3D object. And I can take it around the other side if I want. If I stick it there, and then we go back to our bag, and I rotate the bag, you'll see that it is, oh, come on, turn around for me. It's on the other side, yeah? So you can imagine if your client's got a coffee cup that they want to sell or a flower pot with their branded name on, you can just take their logo and drop it in there. So um, I've got um, a shot I'll show you afterwards. It's a more finished version. So once we've done that, once we've positioned it where we want it, where we've lit it, we've added our graphics, whatever, we then have to render it out. So it's just like doing a render of uh, movie footage. You've got to then do the maths to create the final thing. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. It's not the fastest. <laughs> it's rendering. What can I say? Um, a couple of hints and tips. I've got three settings here, PNG, 16-bit PSD, and 32-bit PSD. So that's increasing levels of quality and detail. And similarly, I've got low, high, and medium speed of the render. So I would suggest do a, a, a low quality, fast PNG render. Do that a couple of times. Takes a couple of minutes or so. Check the lighting, check the way it looks, and then come back to it and do it again as a high quality render. Um, I did a high quality render on this, and it took about two hours. So uh, it depends on the complexity of the subject. So if you're working with transparency, you can, I could make that, that paper bag. I could make it out of glass or ice or whatever I wanted. And the more transparency is, the longer the render time. So just bear that in mind and do some fast, quick renders just to see how things go. Um, here is a shot. A little more finished. Whoops, excuse me. So you can see the bag in place. I didn't put the logo on it, but you get an idea. That's, that's one. I spent probably about 20 minutes on that. You could spend an awful lot more time. Um, but it's still quite, quite effective. You can see how this would appeal to people that want to see a mock-up of their product and what it's going to look like and how they would sell it. Etc. Etc. Now um, I'm just going to jump back out of this again and come out of dimension and go back to my slideshow because I do I don't do products 
I don't do illustrations and product design and things like that. Nothing wrong with it. It's great. But I'm more of a creative photographer. I like to do things that start to push the boundaries a bit. Uh, I've always been involved, even back when I was an assistant, doing things like this. So this is a Polaroid emulsion transfer. And going back to the compositing again, doing lots of things like this, where I'm stretching things and playing around and stuff like that. Um, so I really want to use Adobe Dimension to do something that's a bit more fun, a bit more uh, interesting, because there's only so many bags on tables that you're going to really want to see, or incongruous looking bottles in the middle of the street. You know what I mean? Um, so I wanted to do something a bit more uh, fun with it. And so uh, last year, just before the X-T2 came out, Fuji l gave me a model to play with. It was top secret. It was called Project Taurus, not Fuji X-T2. Uh, and um, I had it for a few weeks. And they just said, take some shots, take some shots, tell us what you think. So I thought this will be an ideal time to try out doing some more 3D work. So I. This is Litchfield Cathedral. I guess there's a few people that know Litchfield. Yeah, this is just a snap. Again, my trademark wonky horizon. And the perspective is a bit out, and I've got all of this stuff going on here. But I thought this is a shot I can use to create something a bit more interesting. Uh, so I took this shot. And then in a studio not far from there, I did a, a, a shot of a bodybuilder. Now, this is where traditional comping techniques are quite important. I've got a flat image and a flat image. So height of the camera, aperture, focal length, the direction of the light, they're all really important because those things you cannot change. Once it's there and it's fixed in the image, you're stuck with it. For anyone that wants to do composites like that, always, always shoot the background first. Because if you're in the studio, you can move your lights around. It's a lot harder to move the sun around to match what you've done in the studio. Yeah? So do your background shots first, and then match your lighting into that. So I've got these two shots, and we've got this whatever it is. You can see my in-depth knowledge of being in the gym. Yeah? The big bouncy ball thing. And I wanted to replace that with something. Originally, I thought about doing you know proper atlas thing with the, the Earth. But then I thought, no, let's have a bit more fun with it. And I had a look online. As I say, there are lots and lots of free 3D resources on there. And I found the Death Star. Yay! <laughs> a bit more fun. So with a lot of Photoshop work, moving the furniture, cleaning things up, straightening things up, and stuff like that, but doing it through Adobe Dimension, I was able to come up with this. Yeah. So, oh, thank you very much. That's the first, <laughs> first round of applause I've had. Um, so yeah, I kind of got, got rid of all of the crowd. That girl was actually here, so I moved her across. Got rid of all of the junk over, so not junk, all of the very important ecclesiastical stuff in the corners. Um, the shafts of light, this is a great tip for anybody that wants that kind of effects there. It's just a barcode. Yeah? So I, I just downloaded a barcode. You can photograph one on the side of a tin of beans or whatever it, it might be. I just downloaded that. And then I put it onto a new layer. So I, I copied my background layer. So I've got two layers. Put the barcode, dragged it and stretched it, copied it, did it again like that. Then I put some Gaussian blur onto that so it softened it, and used that to create a, a layer mask. And then I just adjusted the brightness of the two layers. So the, the layer underneath is much brighter, and that allows all these brighter shafts of light just to shine through. But you've still got that softness. So really easy technique for anyone that wants to play with that. To finish it off, um, I loved it in that wide format like that. But my original intention was to do something as a book cover. You know, um, you've ever seen the old pulp fiction magazines from the 1940s and 50s? I wanted to create something like that and have lots of type over it and stuff like that. So 
what I did was I ended up with something like this. So for the very, very nerdy ones amongst you, I include myself in this. Everything in here, if you can see it on the screens around, it relates back to Star Wars. Apart from Atlas Botalicus, which was my title for the piece, everything in there is, you know, if, if Comic-Con was still on, they'd know. But just simple things like Orrin Ashford, Harrison Ford, Archie Ferris, Carrie Fisher, they're all anagrams of the characters. So Oscar Gulgi is George Lucas. Um, little hints and things like that. So 25th of May, uh, it was the date of the release. Um, 20th Century Fox, 20 cents. That was the film company. There's all sorts of little things like that. Um, so that's the kind of use that I put Adobe Dimension to, which is kind of pushing the boundaries a bit. Uh, it can do all of the other stuff as well, and it does it incredibly well. Adobe Dimension is there. It's part of your Creative Cloud package. If you've got the full Creative Suite, it's there. Just download it, play with it. As I say, a lot of the tools are very, very familiar, and it, it doesn't take long to get your head around it. If you've just got the photography package, you can still get Adobe Dimension as a standalone. Download it as a trial, have a play, see what you think. 